Today at ShopTap.com, we show you how to control your Haldex all-wheel drive system. Haldex is a switchable version of the all-wheel drive system commonly found on a variety of VW and Audi models. Most commonly, the VW Golf R, R32, and Alltrack, in addition to the Audi TT, TTRS, A3, S3, and RS3 models. The concern that many enthusiasts have around this all-wheel drive system is that the rear wheels will not engage immediately when they're needed. There are some tuning options out there, but now you can have the power in your hands. Well, right now the power is in my hands. ShopDap.com to put that power in your hands. This Haldex controller allows you to engage your all-wheel drive on demand. It has a variety of ways to activate it, including a manual lockup, in addition to speed, boost, and throttle-based activation. You can turn the Haldex off for a dyno or so the rear wheels don't engage so you can do a burnout for a quarter mile run. Or you can leave it in pass-through mode to allow it to function as your car would from the factory. You can control this through a phone app or a 12-position programmable switch. The app can also function as a gauge in addition, has this awesome programmable shift light. So a couple notes of something that you want to keep an eye on or be aware of. When you're in manual mode and you hit the brakes, you'll see this go from 100, 100 front and zero. You see the, the thing and then you as you get off the brakes, it goes back to 5248 as far as the split. Um, this is because Halex can't engage when you're on the brakes. Also, when the e-brake is up, it'll do the same thing. So until you let off the brakes, you'll see it go back. And they do have an icon that indicates when the brakes are applied. The mode that I would say is probably gonna be most commonly used for most people would be, I think at the track, turning it off, turning the system off to 100 zero so that there's no Haldex, so you can do a burnout, heating up your front tires and uh, giving you a better launch because hot tires are stickier, or it gives you a better launch at the track. In addition to that, I believe, and I would have to see some evidence of testing, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to do some testing on this, is using the speed-based lockup to, in, to get you the best uh, quarter mile times. I suspect having a speed-based one that's at lower speeds, that it's 50-50 lockup, and then tapering off so you're getting as much power to a single axle as possible, will give you the best total, total quarter mile time. Because once you get over, you know, probably 50 or 60 miles an hour, your Haldex doesn't really need to be doing anything, which means it's dragging on the drivetrain and eating up power from the engine. So I believe you're gonna get your best quarter mile time uh, once you get past a certain speed. Now, if you're using this on a car like an RS3 or a TTRS and the car is modded heavily, maybe you put that speed a little bit higher because you might spin in gears um, into maybe third-ish third, third -ish gear. Uh, if, if you're powerful enough, you probably could spin in those gears, uh, but this car for sure doesn't have enough power. 360 horsepower or so isn't enough to, I would expect it to spin uh, second to third. Here's the thing that I think people are gonna be have a tendency to maybe consider doing that I would highly recommend not doing is do not drive around with your Haldex on 24-7. Uh, this is something that's kind of purpose built and I wouldn't recommend 100% of the time having your Haldex engaged because it probably will uh, certainly reduce the life of the, the pump and potentially the Haldex clutch if you're constantly having it on. Now, I don't think you need to necessarily worry about it not being on and I wouldn't use it sparingly given that information. I just think that some people are gonna have a tendency to get something like this and then just be like, oh, it's better if I have it on all the time, boom. And the thing's just on 24 seven when that's not really intended to be used like that. So um, that's my number one piece of advice with this is do not have your Hellex on 24 seven when using this. Now that you've seen how that works, we're gonna show you how to install that on our all track. And again, this is gonna be similar on pretty much all MQB cars with maybe some slight variation depending on the model. Now the Haldex system on this vehicle is mounted on the rear differential. We don't need to get under there because the wiring that runs up to that is underneath the rear seat. So we're gonna remove this rear seat from this vehicle and then we're gonna access the wiring. So on this model, it's a little bit easier than previous generations. Previous generations, you would have to push back on the seat and then up. Uh, this one pops up in the front like so and then you push back where it's kind of hooked back here and then lift it up that allows you to clear and then you can work that out should be the same here push back and up and then we should be able to pull this thing out 
you just got to work past these latch systems here and the seat belts. That's really the only thing binding us up now. And you can see we're kind of up and out and we're completely free. Now, before we go to install this, let's show you how to plug this in. So it's going to come shipped with a harness for the applicable vehicle. Uh, they have a variety of different ones. Basically, the ones that we're going to be selling and offering are the plug and play versions to allow you to plug this into the car. Gray connector goes in with the gray housing and there's pretty much only one way you can plug it in. Unless you're a Neanderthal, there's two slots on the one side and one on the other. And then this side plugs in like so, and these go into the vehicle in between the two connectors that we're about to show you how to disconnect. Okay, so this is the access port for our vehicle. Now we're gonna remove this and pop it up. I am gonna unplug this or, or pull off this diaphragm, the rubber grommet out of it first. And then to pop it up, we're kind of just gonna get our fingers underneath and pop it up from the side here. There we go, popped it up like so, and we're free. So, I can't really show you because the, the wires are blocking it with the cover, but there you go. We slid this up off of here. Uh, I'm not sure why this area is so dirty, uh, but there's some potential thoughts that I have about it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna unplug this and this is where our piggyback is gonna go in between here. So we're gonna unplug this connector and to do so, you're gonna push back on this tab right here and then slide this off. Now, because ours is clearly very dirty, this probably didn't come off very easy because all that dirt gets in there. So we're unplugged now and we're gonna, um, we're gonna plug in our other one, which is gonna go in pretty easy just like this. This side goes in like this. This side goes in like this. And you're only gonna have one way to plug it in. Now you just have to select how you're gonna run all this stuff, the wiring through here and where you wanna mount this module. I'm gonna try to find a place that's underneath the seat that has some clearance, or you could probably run it underneath onto the back of your, your seat in the back seat. Now another option I think is a good one, just depends on your comfort level and modifying your car. Right here you can see this is where the access port is supposed to be. You can see this is where the wiring is supposed to go that runs right here. Now, you also can take this and cut it out to allow you the space you need for your ma module mounting. This will require the least amount of movement, but it will require you to cut this and modify the, the seat foam itself. It's probably the easiest option, and I think the one that most people are gonna take, it just depends on what you wanna do. With Depending on where you wanna mount this thing, it might require you to, to extend wires, which isn't gonna be ideal. So this would be your easiest way to make this happen is to just mount this thing right on top of this box. So this is how your cover normally mounts, is you have your wire, your grommet that it runs through, and then this connector. This is how it would be mounted if this was plugged into the Haldex. This runs from here back to the Haldex underneath the car. The way I would advise installing this on a car to keep everything as easy as possible is to remove that. You can purchase a separate grommet, and then you're gonna take your adapter here. This is to our Haldex module here, you can see just like so, and you're gonna plug it in just like this to make that happen. Now, this one, this side of it still has to go into this connector. So what I would advise in this circumstance is to remove that, and then you can take this wiring and you can just cut down to spread this open a little bit. You can depin this connector, slide that lock out there, use a wire terminal tool, stick it in there, depin it, run it through this new grommet and then put that in here and you can mount it in place like so. This will allow you to run this, have everything plugged in correctly and not have to change any of your factory wiring whatsoever. So your setup will essentially look something along these lines. The only difference is this will be split down a little bit more and then you would run that, have a grommet in there. Your factory grommet, you're gonna push to the side and that leave that off. Again, the purpose of this and the reason why I'm recommending doing it this way is because then you don't need to modify this in any way whatsoever to get this to seal still properly. You can just leave it in place. And then if you wanna remove this from your car, you can still just unplug this harness on, and the module and then plug that back in from the factory just the way it was without having to change any of your parts back. Now, if you don't care about any of that, 
You could just punch a hole in this thing and pull the wires through and run it like that. That's an option. It's potentially gonna leak at some point, which for most people, probably not that big of a deal because you're not gonna get any water through here. You can see how much dirt we have from all the rally stuff we've done. That probably would have gotten, it's already in this cabin area a little bit. You can see all underneath this seat here, there's dirt just from that system, but uh, it probably would be worse had we had a hole in a grommet here. Okay, so what I've found seems to be easiest on this car is the Alltrack has this access port in the back. You can actually get it directly underneath and then allow that up like this. And then you would be able to mount it to your, to your floor right here, or to the floor over here. Your back seat's probably not gonna be a great location for that, mostly just because uh, this seat folds down and you're not gonna really want these wires yanked around a lot. So I'll probably mount this thing right here, just like so, and then make sure when you're reinstalling your rear seat that your wires have enough space to actually work. Now, important thing to note is this does have a lot of tension on here depending on where you're mounting. So, so if you're gonna need to extend these wires as much as possible to give you as much space as possible to, to give you as much, a lot of leash here. Now, I'm going back in with our seat. Real important note here. This sub part's gonna be kinda, kinda troublesome so we have two holes here. This is for our, our seat belt buckles to come through and then you have to hook underneath these latch systems. So this is gonna be kind of a pain. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of get here underneath up at an angle that allows you to hook this other part underneath these latch things or at least get it started. And then get your seat belt buckles lined up with where they need to be. Now, because the angle is really harsh, you're not gonna be able to get them to feed in. So you're gonna to have to kind of take your hands underneath and feed those buckles up as you kind of work in this part of the seat. This is not real fun um, and it's kind of a pain. So it might take a minute for you. Uh, I have a little bit more experience with this stuff. So if you're an amateur, it might take you a little bit more time to get this done. And we're pretty much in there. We just got to get everything finalized in all the way. Just like so. All I did was use my legs to push back on it. And then it should be, yep. You see these things should line up and just pop right in place. And we're done. Thanks so much for watching. And remember purchases for parts like this or any others help support videos just like this one. We do have the Gen 5, all generations of the Howis controller for these cars will be linked in the description as well as videos related to this. Also keep in mind, we have a variety of videos, hundreds of them related to DIYs for specifically Mark 7, but tons of them for all different models, including a Haldex service how-to, which we will also link in the description.